Let's go. Cool kids step to the front. Cool kids. Too sweet sign for the click. Bitch, you don't work there. I feel like I need a shower just looking Gotta get at ready. Like, what the fuck does that mean? Yeah, no. the they ain't been the same ever since. What? Living pretty we well cut the head off the stick. You're going to be single for the rest of your life. Brian Lesnar on the beach. Look at the heat. Sleep flex and Look at the heat. Whole new swag with a pass on the tag. Coming live from the west to the east. Better recognize on the mouthpiece. See the power level. Got I get no bitches. I'm a hoe. Greetings and salutations, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, non binary pals, and everybody in between. Welcome back to the Gresham Lease Podcast. This is episode 37 of this illustrious podcast in the making. And joining me as always is, well, usually joining me as always is the queen of rebels herself, Swell of the Bandit. But this episode, for the very first time in quite some time, I'm solo. I am. Not solo Sokoa, but I am solo in today's episode because life happens. But we move on because this is episode 37, like I mentioned a few seconds ago. And today is going to be a pretty solid edition because we got a retro review on tap for you. October 9th, 2013th edition of NXT, which saw Antonio Cesaro return to the black and gold brand to face off against Leo Kruger, no Adam Rose. So this is an interesting dynamic, but that is not all because we're going to talk a little bit about the Valley in the Valley event that took place, the New Japan Pro Wrestling Valley in the Valley event, which in my book, it might not be in a lot of people's book, but in my book was headlined by Kyrie defending the New Japan or the IWGP Women's World Championship against the CEO Mercedes Monet formerly known as Sasha Banks in the WWE. And um, we're gonna, I'm going to talk about that briefly and so much more on tap. But before that, it's time again for a few house notes, excluding the live show reviews that you just saw, including this past weekend. The video format of this show has a new home over on patreon.com slash Gresh Digital. It will be available for all tiers starting at $1. One single dollar. Like you, can just, you can separate yourself from $1. One dollar. You can, you can help the podcast out immensely. If you're the person who likes to watch their podcast in video format on YouTube or whatever the case may be, it will be un, 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 unlisted. Excuse me. I had to get the word out. But it will be unlisted on the, our YouTube channel. And you can share it wherever you want. But you, the listener, can get it for one single dollar. Because there's some things you can't really articulate in the audio format that you can articulate in the video format. But, hey, that's the beauty behind this. But you can do it right there over at patreon.com slash Gresh Digital. That will be your place to go. But as far as everyone else in general, as I just mentioned, the show will be available wherever you listen to your podcast. In case you missed our previous post-show reviews for both the Royal Rumble and Elimination Chamber, they are available now over on youtube.com slash at Gresh Unleashed Pod. That is G-R-E-S-H Unleashed P-O-D. That's it. It was a one-man show, just like today's episode, impromptu style, and it went great, in my opinion. Uh, I articulated my points and words perfectly in my book. Uh, I listened to it back because I'm the editor as well. Uh, and who knows if Swell isn't available, just like t today or in the future, we might do a one-man show. And hey, and all you got to do is tap in. Scan that QR code that you see over on the video format, over on YouTube, Twitch, for the time that is available on Twitter. Scan that QR code, subscribe, and get no, put the turn of the notifications on, and hey, we'll go live. And who knows? We might, might add some more stuff to, to this podcast, not this current season. But this is season two. This is episode 37. And let's get right to the business. All right. I'm going to talk a little bit about Battle in the Valley from 2023. Uh, it was presented by New Japan Pro Wrestling Live in San Diego, I believe. Or no, no, San Jose, excuse me. San Jose, California. It was in my book, like I mentioned, it was headlined by Kyrie defending her IWGP Women's Championship against the CEO of New Japan and Stardom, Mercedes Monet. Uh, and I'm and I'm gonna be honest with you, in my humble opinion, it delivered in my book immensely. Even though it was it started at what? It started at like 1.40, 1 1.50 a.m. The show had technical difficulties because it, it happened the same night as Elimination Chamber. I was doing my post show 
and I had it on in the background while doing the post show. So I believe the match that came on before this was the uh, Eddie Kingston versus Jay White match that uh, saw Jay White lose. So I still haven't watched the entire show back. I might do that right after today's episode, and I'm I'm actually put that on while I'm editing other other stuff. But man, I have to be honest with you. That was that match itself delivered, in my humble opinion. For someone who has been out of the ring since May of last year, that being Sasha Banks, Mercedes Monet, wow, that's all I can say. You can't really articulate into words what it, what what she did, what they did out there. Like, and all hats off and kudos to Kyrie as well because she not she she showed up and showed out herself. I miss seeing her in WWE. I understand why she left the WWE, but this was I believe this was the second time I've seen her. Since she left WWE, I don't really follow stardom. I should at some point, but for now, I don't really follow stardom. So seeing her like compete the way that she was, it was it was awesome. It was awesome. I enjoyed it for for what it was, and hopefully, we get to see. I get to see her, or I can remember to see her because there's so much good wrestling out here nowadays that it's kind of hard to keep up with. Because I want to watch MLW, but I don't have reels, YouTube TV. Make that happen. So it's like it's so much to keep up with, but so far so good. That was they knocked this out of the park. Uh, shout out to Mercedes for her entrance being a tribute to the late great Hana Kimura, uh, who passed away in 2020. Um, it was it was a sight to see. Like I enjoyed it. Um, the match itself, like like I said, it was so much stuff. But you you really remember Mercedes was there to sh- remind you WWE, no WWE. She is one of the best wrestlers, women's wrestlers in the world. Or you can just drop the women's part and say she's one of the best wrestlers in the world. And I can I can I can tip my hat to that, and I can bet my whole house on that. She is one of the best women's wrestlers in the world. This isn't, this is this isn't me being my goofy ass self on Twitter. This is me being honest and and truthful. That's just how I feel. So this match itself, I, I, like I, I, tell, I tell people, I literally don't recommend a lot of matches, but every time someone asks me what good women's match that they, they should watch, I'd recommend this match. I've been recommending this match all week. And it's honestly a, a pretty good match. And, it, and you can tell it was pretty good for me to stay up because I watched the entire Elimination Chamber event, did a whole post show, and then stayed up and then watched this ent- match in its entirety. But I'm gonna be honest with you, I tapped out after this match. Like I, I probably th- who did who did uh who, who who was it? Okada. Okada defended the title against um I it hit the name is slipping my mind, but I'm pretty sure it was a match that I've seen a million times it before in the past because I'm not I'm not a foreign to New Japan, but I know for a fact that I'm pretty sure I probably was like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to bed. And I, I went right back to bed because that was my main event. Kudos and congratulations to Mercedes Mo- Monet. Is it Monet or Monet? Because I'll be pronouncing it Monet, but it might be money. Monet. Like I know on commentary they kept saying money. It was uh, uh, Aiden English because that's the name that we're going to be talking about. Aiden English, formerly known as Aiden English, and it, it, who was on commentary, he kept saying money. But I was like, it may be money. But the way they put the way the apostrophe on the E is like Monet, but who knows? But Battle in the Valley, it was a pretty pretty good episode, not episode, pretty pretty good show that that you guys should really really check out. And hopefully, we can get more stuff like this in the future because I need to check out more Stardom. Like, like I I think I'm gonna make it my mission to start eventually maneuvering into get reviewing stardom content on the show to so that I can check that out and get you guys who are not new or who are new to the show and as well as who are new to outside WWE wrestling that, that I'm gonna get you guys invested into that as well. So like just because we're doing retro reviews doesn't mean we're done with modern wrestling. It's just we're taking a little break. We'll be back eventually. But for now we're just focusing on retro reviews. And speaking of retro reviews all right, now it's time for us to take a t- trip down memory lane again, hop into the time machine, October 9th, 2013. Antonio Cesaro, still, he still has his first name at this time, faces off against the one and only Leo Kruger on this edition of the Black and Gold NXT. And I must say, in, in brief retrospect, this wasn't really... This was pretty much, in my opinion, 
a slight downgrade from the the match that we we or the the show that we covered last week, which was which was headlined by the best two out of three falls between Sami Zayn and Antonio Cesaro. So this one wasn't really. I mean, it was more so showcases, and it felt more like what the fuck because you'll see why what I mean by what the fuck pretty shortly. But it was more so like it wasn't a bad show, but it wasn't brilliant. In my if that makes sense, it was basically. A, a developmental show like everybody you could tell people were still learning the ropes and learning the wwe styles with promos and stuff like it was a few awkward moments that we'll talk about that i kind of that i kind of let slide because i'm like they eventually caught on and actually got got into it but this was a pretty like this was a pretty standard episode of nxt and speaking of standard we opened a show the standard way with a hype promo for Rob Van Dam, who will make an appearance on this episode. And it caught me off guard because the when I saw the credit, I was like, oh, Antonio Cesaro versus Leo Krug. I thought that was the main event. But then when I saw that, I was like, did I click on an ECW episode? Like, what is going on? It's actually it's going to be Rob Van Dam versus Aiden English in the main event. The artiste Aiden English. Let me, let me correct myself on that one. We didn't get the code open to the show. And the opening intro song was a bop. Like... As you can see, I am high. <laughs> uh, but we are live in Full Sail University from Orlando, Florida, with Tom Phillips on commentary again with Alex Riley. We kick off the show with Leo Kruger, the match that I thought was the main event. We kick off the show with the actual hyped show or match from the description from Peacock the Cock. Uh, we kick off with Leo Kruger, and he had a bark with the crowd or a bark. Of, hur, hur. So what was his gimmick again? I need to, like, I need a, a brief summary of Leo Kruger's gimmick. So right here on the podcast, I'm going to do my research. What was Leo Kruger's gimmick? <laughs> uh, okay, someone put Leo Kruger's. Oh, Leo Kruger, because according to the sport, Stir.com. Uh they had it was listed under NXT failed gimmicks should have worked. Uh they put this for Leo Kruger. Leo Kruger is the highest profile failed gimmick in NXT because he was a top heel in the promotion. Disappeared for two months and reappeared as the Russell Brand esque Adam Rose. That made it to the main roster, but Kruger was the better character, a South African mercenary. So he was a mercenary and big game hunter who decided to hunt the most dangerous game of all, WWE developmental wrestlers. That's not really scary, but he's the perfect wrestling heel with a great look and clear goals. The character change really cost him an obvious high profile with, they put John Cena. Think, looking back at Leo Kruger, I mean, when I, was, when I was watching this episode, I can see where they was coming from, but he wasn't really a heel with this match. So, I mean, if it was another version I probably need to look at to really articulate this mercenary gimmick that they think he he had or or this character that they that he had then i got it but from character's perspective he was barking with the crowd he basically proved that he was a tough son of a bitch during this entire match against antonio cesaro but outside of that it really didn't give me too much and i think this was around the time before he disappeared and came back because i believe he was on the main roster in 2014 so I'm pretty sure he disappeared, became Adam Rose, and then he was on the roster, feeded with a bunny, then became a social outcast, and then he was fired. Did I get that right? Uh, the commentary team was hyping up Sami Zayn sneaking into becoming number one contender for the NXT title by pinning Bo Dallas in a mask. Kruger's opponent was none other than our boy, the returning Antonio Cesaro, who storms out of the gate with a drop kick. 
this was a pretty standard match. Like I, like I just said moments ago, it's like you can really tell too much, but it's a pretty standard TV match during the opening of this match. Kruger was getting his stuff in as, as was Cesaro. Back from the break, Kruger took flight. No top flight, but he took flight with a tope before they announced the artiste aiding English going one-on-one with Rob Van Dam. Dude, tell me. So that was the main event. So that's when I figured out, I'm like, oh, so this is that's the main event. Okay, cool. Cesaro, as the match progressed, Cesaro kept wanting a count out. A back body drop on the apron, got a seven. That pissed off Cesaro, so he tossed him out. That got a little chuckle out of me because he tossed him right back. He's like, man, get your ass out of here. He tossed him out again and hit a gut wrench suplex on the apron and got a nine count. So there we go. There's another nine count. Cesaro then went into a European uppercut frenzy. Like, I believe he hit like 10 in a row. He was just boom, 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 boom. Jesus, he boom, boom. He was just hitting him and only getting two count for that. And I'm like, all right, I, I, I'm getting, I'm getting the vision. Which Cesaro was literally, clearly being aggravated because he was like, bro, won't this motherfucker stay down? Cesaro then w- went for the neutralizer, but got out of it as well. He literally back body dropped him out of that. So that was a nice, and I like, I liked how commentary hyped it up. They was like, this is very rare that someone's fought out of the neutralizer. Uh, Kruger kept fighting back after literally at this point taking 12 uppercuts, including an avalanche one. So that man was not quitting whatsoever. Cesaro then locked in a rear chin lock. Like, I believe that's the same lock that he had Sammy in where he literally got the second fall, I believe. So he tied it up during the best two out of three falls. So he locked them out and Kruger is still conscious. Like he was spitting up saliva. So he was basically selling that as a lethal choke and Kruger was literally not finna, finna die. Uh, Because Cesaro wrapped his legs around him and he still had fighting. So Cesaro hit him with a stiff lariat. He literally took this man's chest, caved it in, his neck separated from his head, and his head literally rolled back and rolled it right back into into the position, right into a neutralizer for Cesaro to pick up the win. They almost lost me in the middle. I'm not gonna lie. This match, it had it started off hot, it kind of dragged a little bit in the middle, but then the ending they caught they really got me back. And I love this entire match. Like this is like, this is the second match I can say that I love from Antonio Cesaro, and and I'm on the train where it's like, why WWE didn't really do too much with him? Like, yeah, I get what some people are saying, like, oh, this is my favorite tag team wrestler, but it's like, come on, like you can't tell me this man if they give it because he's not really doing too much in AEW right now. I mean, I know he's the Ring of Honor World Champion, but it's like they're not really giving too much, like. He's not doing too much that makes you like, oh, I got to watch Dark, where he's always defending the title. I'm like, I don't care. Give me give me substance to care about the meal. You see what I'm saying? Like, give it some season. Give it some flavor. Because if you give me the same bland plate with no seasoning, no salt, no pepper, no Creole seasoning, no slap your mama, no hot your mama, nothing, then I'm not going to eat it. I'm just going to be like, okay, you can. I'm going to pick at it. I'm going to entertain the funny part, and then I'm just going to toss the meal. That that analogy doesn't make any sense, but it made sense in my, in my brain, and I probably messed it up. But you get what I'm saying. If it's boring or if you're not giving it much to do, then I am not going to pay too much attention to it. That's all I'm saying. Uh, but, yeah, after the match, Cesaro went to the top and hit Leo Kruger with a big boss knee drop. King Kong knee drop to the throat he literally landed right on the throat with his exposed knee because he has no knee pads at this point so basically i'm guessing this is either going to continue i gotta look it up or if we come across this episode again or a future episode we're gonna it's gonna come up with it and then after that we'll see but um yeah that was that first match i enjoyed it for what it was that's all i'm saying like cesaro claudio castanoli whatever he's he's called he is great in that ring he just needs to be like he needs something to work with as far as like story wise because for those of you who don't know or for those of you who do know and need a reminder i'm a storyteller i enjoy stories i enjoy substance with my stories you see what i'm saying like i don't i don't need you to go from a to z i need you to get give me to to reel me in on a Keep me intrigued from B to C, 
D E F G H I J K L M R P. And then once we get the QRS TV WXYZ, I want to see it all the way to the end. Don't start, keep me in the middle in the beginning, lose me in the middle a little bit to where I'm clicking on my phone and then I'm done. Whether it's a match or a character. Why do you think the bloodline stuff has been keeping me intrigued for the past two years? It's because they keep adding substance to the plot and into the middle. If you, whether people want to admit it or not, that's all I'm saying. All right, we're back from the break, and I had my first what the fuck moment right here because we had Charlotte pre Flair last name out here with brunette or brown hair with blonde little tips, accompanied to the ring by Bailey with Renee Young hopping on commentary. Her opponent is Santana Garrett. I, I haven't seen, like is she still wrestling? Because I remember, yeah. Uh, it started off as a pretty standard TV match. This was the part. This was part of the time where she wanted to, quote unquote, separate herself from her father, even though she hit a, a woo right at the beginning. So I'm like, did you? Summer Rae and Sasha Banks walks down to the ring to w- watch the match. And I was like, oh, they young, too. It's like it's like if you see them now compared to back then, you'd be like, oh, you feel like an old grandpa. <laughs> Uh, Sasha and Summer were fake clapping along with the crowd distracting Charlotte a few moves later and Charlotte hits the natural selection before it was called that so they just say oh impact to pick up the win it was like I said it was a pretty standard match after the match Summer grabbed the mic delivering a message that the divas in the back knows who's the first ladies they, they need to know who's the first lady of NXT and the boss of NXT this is basically a WWE 2K universe mode promo that's literally it all the way to when she dropped the mic. She literally walked over and dropped the mic like a universe mode promo. I'm pretty sure this is what they mimic the, the the promo engine THQ did for their universe mode stuff or their creative or video stuff. Because uh, basically the, ma- the match was basically introducing, or this promo, excuse me, was basically introducing the beautiful, fierce females, the BFFs, Sasha Banks and Summer Rae, and took credit for Paige being officially out and will run NXT and all of WWE. And then I wrote down, why is that microphone so damn big? Because the microphone, she was holding it like this, but the microphone box that covers it, the microphone, it was like this big. And I'm like, why is and this is like the entire time I was staring at the microphone? I'm like, why is that why is that thing so fucking big? After the promo was done, Summer dropped it like a universe mode cutscene. Paige attacked both women from behind and even hit Sasha with a head, but like it, that, that shit looked like it hurt. Um, but the advantage was in favor of the BFS until Emma ran out to make the save and ran off the ladies to head to the break. When I saw this Emma, I was like, whatever they're doing now with Emma, what? It's like, this, this is night and day. Like, this is obviously the bubbly Emma with the whole goofy dance, but it's like, whatever they're doing with Emma now, now that she's back in WWE, they need to do something with her because she needs to be more than... Riddick Moss or Mad Cat Moss's uh, hype girlfriend. That's it. Uh, speaking of hype, we get a pro- Mojo Rally promo. Uh, I don't get hype. I stay hype. I remember that was the thing. Wow. But he debuts next on NXT. This is another, like, whoa, this is a young cat. Uh, backstage, we get a re- reaction promo from the BFS responding to Paige and Emma, uh, I guess, uh, even in the odds from their attack. And they challenge the two of them to a tag team match. Next week on NXT. Next up, we get a match out first is future NXT Tag Team Champion Danny Birch. Uh, for those of you who don't remember, Orny Loken or Biff Busick of DPW and Danny Birch came uh, were a tag team before both of them were released. I believe Biff is back in WWE as a trainer, so that's a nice little little tidbit there. But uh, Danny Birch, I don't know what he's been up to. Like, is he st- is he still wrestling? I need someone to let me know. Uh, after another commentary spot where they build up the new BFFs duo, we get Mojo Riley geeked up and hyping himself as he gets out to the ring for his debut match. After Birch was pretty much dominant for the opening, Mojo made a comeback, pouncing Birch all over the place before him, beating the man with his ass, literally, shoving it all his cheeks on the stomach, and he literally sat on the man. He had a rear view and then sat on the man to pin him and get the win. That was literally, it. and he he sprinted back up the up the up the what you call it up the up the up the ramp, and like he was, they was like, oh, he's still going. I'm like, bro, I get it, but calm the fuck now. 
<laughs> uh, backstage Paige does uh, doesn't appreciate Emma helping her and Tim the interview because I believe I don't even know that's his name because I know Summer Ray called him that. Uh, but I don't know if it was a joke or not. But Tim, the interviewer, informed them about the BFFs challenge, which they accept in the most awkward way possible. Emma starts doing her her dancing gimmick, to which Paige said, "Emma, I'll hurt you." And she said it in so like you could tell she was disgusted. She's like, I- "I'm gonna hurt you if you don't stop this shit. Stop, stop." <laughs> We're back from the break, and Sylvester Lafort is he still doing anything? Is he still wrestling? It's a lot of the, like I literally wrote down watching this. Show. I'm like, is he still wrestling? Is he still wrestling? It's like so many people that you be like, is he still wrestling? But Sylvester Lafort introduces the team of Scott Dawson and Alexander Rusev, the most randomized team I've ever seen in my life. And their opponents is a young Enzo Amore and Big Cass. And then uh, this is this entrance was pre uh, you saw if you saw it. you do it. It was literally it was literally a randomized entrance music before they I guess before CFOs. I think I think that song was CFOs. So before, before CFOs came into the picture, so the entrance really didn't sync like. They was the crowd was chanting soft before it's like before they said SAW like they were saying a lot of stuff like I believe Cass called one of his um one of his opponents or all, both of them sloppy jalopies. Uh and Enzo calls them S A W L T soft. So this is way before their entrance was on point. The crowd started chanting, and I thought <laughs> the match itself was pretty a pretty standard tag team match. And then I started listening to the crowd, but then the crowd started chanting. I thought, and I literally, for for the life of me, don't 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 get mad at me for saying this, but I thought they was t- chanting sloppy toppy, and I was literally confused for like ten minutes. I'm like, slop, who's giving a sloppy toppy right now? This is this this is this is not it. They was basically chanting what Big Cass would say earlier: the sloppy jalopy. Or Jalofi or Jalofi. I don't know what the fuck he called them, but he called them sloppy Jalofis <laughs> in the most uh, Bronx accent I've ever heard in my life. So I was confused in the entire with the chant. I was confused with the match, but Rusev makes the tag after getting rid of Cass and locks in the accolade to pick up the submission win for their team. And that was literally it. Oh, after the match, Rusev and Dawson assaulted Cassidy and they locked in the accolades, sending a dominant message. So I'm believing this is them losing before they introduce Carmella to the duo to the duo to make it a trio. And that's when they started winning. So I'm guessing Enzo and Cass were losing. But it was getting cheered from the crowd, but they were losing for a bit until Carmella came into the picture as their hairstylist, I believe that's what she was. Correct me if I'm wrong. So, but then after that, they started winning, and then they started getting over. They got the entrance music, the whole entrance intact. I believe Enzo got injured at some point, and that, that was their way to keep them on TV without them losing momentum. So that was that. Backstage, we get an interview with the new number one contender for the NXT Championship, the one and only Sami Zayn, and they announced that the match would go down next week. Bo Dallas walks up to Sami all hurt and detested, and he says... You hurt my feelings in the most Michael Jackson voice I've ever heard in my life. You really hurt my feelings. I thought we were friends. And Sammy says, it ain't nothing personal, but he just wants the title because he's the champion. That's it. And Bo says, you know what? We don't have to do this, Sammy. You, we, can, we, can, we can team up next week. We can, we can be friends. We can go after the NXT Tag Team Championships, and we can, and we can rule NXT together as champions. And he, sh- and he takes his hand out and tries to get into shaking. And Sammy says, oh, yeah, sure. We, we can be NXT Tag Team Champions. I, I agree. We can go after those titles. But after I win the NXT Championship and Bo is appalled, he is flabbergasted and says, unbelievable, unbelievable. <laughs> That's all he said. Like, oh, my God. It, like, Bo, Bo pulling... The Michael Jackson voice with this is like I don't know why they didn't do too much with, much with this one. This image, was, this gimmick was. This is you can tell this version of Bo Dallas was another thing that falls on the category of NXT, where WWE or Vince McMahon didn't know what the fuck to do with him on Raw SmackDown because this gimmick was hilarious 
in the most entertaining way. It was like he was sad. He was trying to manipulate you without manipulating you because he was. It was in the guise of being a friend. Like, come on, man. That was Chef's Kiss. It is what it is. Now he's Uncle Howdy and killing himself on TV <laughs> on, on premium live events. Like he's literally exploding and then coming back like nothing happened the very next day. So there's that. Next up is our main event. And introduced first is the artiste, Aiden English, who breaks out in song. And I wasn't, and it, and it sounded way better than that. Uh, but this dude is a great singer. I enjoyed it. I like this. I like this song. I didn't write down what he said word for word, bar for bar, but. He was basically like, he's the greatest sports entertainer. I don't know why I just said it like that. He's the greatest sports entertainer in WWE. He sounded better than that, though. Uh, <laughs> uh, I like the song, though, for real. Like, he was hyping himself up. Like, it, it and this was basically. Another led into my next what the fuck moment because out next is Rob Van Dam's personal ring announcer, Ricardo Rodriguez. I believe he's still doing like is he still in Egypt? Like I know he was still he they announced he did something or he announced he did something. I ain't really been keeping up with him either outside of WWE. There's so many of that, but this was after they broke up him and Alberto Dale can't keep a job. So that was that. Rob Van Dam then comes out next to a nice ovation from the full sale crowd. A nice little back and forth between both men with RBD doing RBD things with kicks and, and wheelbarrow kicks and uh, monkey flips and all that good stuff. It became basically a showcase match for Rob to do his thing and Aiden trying to find a way to slow the momentum, but he couldn't. And Rob was about to go for the rolling thunder until he rolled until Aiden rolled out of the ring and wanted to walk away. He like, I'm done with this, man. I'm done with this shit. Like, stop it. Keep it away. But Rob... Uh, but he caught Rob slipping because Rob was like, he, he he took the bait and he caught Rob slipping by kicking the, the second ring rope. I'm surprised that wasn't a DQ because he kicked him in the balls, but whatever, what can you do? Uh, he To gain the advantage. Uh, after RBD did all his cool stuff, Aiden gave the customary chin hole rest lock to slow down the momentum. That was it, literally. RBD then kicked Aiden in the face after blocking the corner. Uh, I guess he was about to slam him into the turnbuckle. And he did his comeback spot with the Larry Larry kick to the back or the wheelbarrow kick uh, with the rolling thunder to wrap it up. And then RBD then took us home, literally, literally took us home after this with a five star frog splash after taunting Raw. Bam, damn, to pick up the win. And that was the episode of NXT. It was a pretty standard episode of NXT at the time. Nothing too much to rave about. Everything wasn't bad, but it was, it was good for what it was i enjoyed the opening match with antonio cesaro and leo kruger i uh, wish they could have done some stuff with leo like now that i know his gimmick was a mercenary there's so much stuff like my brain is like he can be he can be a mercenary for hire for certain people he can literally uh dominate and his and his goal is like okay he can he, like if you can have a arrogant or a cocky heel trying to find a way to uh, stop the baby face and he'd be like and he does it like he literally is hired as a mercenary he takes out the baby face and his reward is he's like i want the championship and he gets a championship match and then he eventually wins it and it it, it comes into a fun little thing where you can take or you can take the character and really um so much so take it and like the scenery you can take him out to the jungle or something like you can literally turn it into a fun little little time to tell stories for the baby face to try to get revenge on him he can target the family like it's so much stuff that they could have done with him but obviously he went the adam rose route the oh 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 Boom, do, 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 do. Oh, 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 o
don't hit the road. And don't you come back no more. Sorry about that. <laughs> I literally lost the plot. Like, this song started to me. And speaking of... Dun, mm, mm, Money, 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 money. That was the episode of NXT. Hopefully, you enjoyed it just like I did. But that is our show. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed today's episode of the Gresham Leaves podcast. Make sure you guys check out the Patreon. Make sure you guys check out the merch. Uh, you can see if you're watching the video format, I finally got the hoodie for the Eat, Sleep, Flex, and Repeat, as well as the black one right back there over my right shoulder. Hopefully you guys enjoyed today's episode. It was just a solo episode today, but hopefully I entertained you for the brief time that we are here. It's not too long, but not too short at the same time because uh, we had a lot of, a lot of fun. Hopefully you guys have a lot of fun and watching this and letting people know that watch the Gresham Leach podcast and, and watch Gresh itself because so much content that I'm bringing back to the main channel, the YouTube channel over on uh, youtube.com slash Gresh Digital Media or youtube.com slash at it's Gresh. Uh, I, I brought back the What If series uh, where I basically gave my own customized spin on certain stories. I have a new one dropping today it should be out already if you haven't already make sure you head over to youtube and give it a like give it a give it, give it a subscribe uh hit the bell and all that good stuff and hopefully next week uh will be just as eventful as this week because i'm thinking we might tap into the takeover um i saw a lot of people recommending uh certain shows that we should watch and takeover it wasn't really that long if that's what I think of. So we might tap into some takeovers. Obviously, we're going to watch some few more episodes of NXT as well as Raw's SmackDown from back in the day. And we might tap into ECW. So many retro reviews we got on the table and on the cards that hopefully you guys uh, tap in and join with your boy, your voice that does the most to prevail mischief. Gresh, that's my nickname. There it is. And hopefully you guys stay safe out here in the world of unknown. But you got to remember, remember, remember the one known and that is, as your favorite voice that does the most in the purveyor of mischief, I have to remind you of the one known, and that is you are appreciated, especially by me, as well as everyone in behind the scenes that does what they do to keep bringing you guys the entertaining stuff. And with that being said, you guys stay safe out here in these streets. And remember, as the let me read the slogan, the shirt that you can copy it at Spring that is on YouTube. You can click on it. I'm getting my hoodie off. But remember to always eat, sleep, flex, and repeat. I'm out. Be breezy. <laughs> <laughs>